This is an unofficial ASBOG study video for uh, working through problems that include a parent DIP. Um, again, this is entirely unofficial. I'm not affiliated with ASBOG. It's not endorsed by them. Um, this is just something that as a professor I'm making for my structure students um, to get a better grip on some of the questions that might show up on this uh, exam. So. One question that I'm anticipating you're getting is something about a parent dip, finding uh, how dip looks when it's viewed in a certain cross-section line. So let's say you are making a cross-section from A to A prime, and you want to know how does this unit K, how does it dip um, if we view it in that line? So. One thing to remember is that a parent dip will always be equal to or less than true dip. Okay, so true dip um, is what you would see if you could view the beds exactly parallel to strike. Okay, so let's say you make a cross section from A to A prime, and this doesn't have to be on this map, but you might make a cross section where some beds look like they are dipping like this. Okay. Now, in real life, those beds could be dipping that angle, or they could be dipping greater than that angle. This could be this is considered the apparent dip along that cross section line. All right. So, how would you, if you were given a problem like this, um, how would you get your apparent dip? So, the first thing is you need to memorize the apparent dip formula. Okay, so that's take the arctan of the tangent of the true dip times the sine of beta. Beta is going to be the angle, and it's the acute angle, so the one smaller than 90, between strike and the cross section line. Now, when you go to do this on your calculator, you need to make sure that your calculator is set um, to give you answers in degrees so that you're consistent um, with how you can measure things using your, your protractor on your map and the answers that you're getting. Okay, so first thing that I've noticed or that I would do is Sometimes, especially if an exam is printed in black and white, it's really hard to tell the difference between contour intervals and a contact. So I'm going to pick um, one of these contacts. So I'm going to pick the, the unit we're interested in is K. And let's say we're going to find the apparent dip of this boundary between K and T. I'm just going to highlight that so that I know and I remember, even if it's bolded, that that is my contact. Okay, so I'm going to set up a quick little strike line problem. By doing this, what, I, what I'm going to do is find places where my contact intersects the same contour, elevation contour, twice. So I'm going to go from 1,000 to 1,000, like this. And then I'm also going to go from, looks like I'm going uphill because this is 1,200, 1,100 to 1,100. These should be, and they may not be in real life, but for an exam, they should be roughly parallel. Okay, so what that means, if I come in here and draw a perpendicular line between the two, like this. It means that if I were able to walk th uh, through the air from this point to this point, I would be walking perpendicular to strike, some horizontal map distance, which I can get from my, from my scale, but I would be walking perpendicular to strike, some horizontal map distance, and I would be going from 1,100 feet in elevation to 1,200 feet in elevation. So just to visualize this, I would be walking some horizontal distance, but I would be going from 
1,100 feet in elevation to 1,200 feet. Oh, sorry, 1,100 feet in elevation to 1,000 feet in elevation. So that means that I would be dropping 100 feet as I walk some horizontal distance. So if you take um, either your ruler or just a scrap of paper, um, you can mark how far that is. So for me, it goes out about a quarter of an inch. And I'm going to come down here and measure what a quarter of an inch is. So for me, a quarter of an inch is approximately 50 feet. So if I walk over 50 feet, then I am walking down 100 feet. Okay. So what is the dip of my bed? I'm going to do dip is the angle from the horizontals. This is my, this is my true dip is a tan opposite over adjacent. 100 divided by 50. So let's see. I'm going to grab my calculator. I'm just using my iPhone. You can use um, obviously just a calculator for the exam, but for this practice, I'm just going to use this. I get 63 and a half degrees. So that's how much my unit is dipping. And so that is the true dip. If I could draw in a little dip symbol in here, it would be parallel to strike with a dip going down 63.5 degrees. Okay. So now I need to figure out um, what beta is. So I know now that true dip is 63.5 degrees and I need to come in with beta. So this is my direction of strike. This is an angle between strike and the cross section line and this is also an angle between strike and the cross section line. This one is greater than 90 so it is not the one we want. This one's less than 90 so we definitely want this. All right, so let's line this up and figure out what our angle is. All right, I get 37 degrees for beta. And so now we're going to do tangent of 63.5 times sine of 37 degrees and remember to have your calculator set to degrees when you're doing this. So I'm going to have tangent 63.5 degrees sine of 37 degrees. So for this I get 1.2 and then I'm going to take the a tan, the arc tangent of that. So a tan 1.2 in degrees. And I get 50.2 degrees. Okay, so my apparent dip is 50.2 degrees. Always double check that it's less than or equal to your true dip. The bigger beta is, or the closer to 90 beta is, the closer to true dip your value should get. So here our beta is pretty small, 37. If I had gotten 62, I'd be real worried. I'd go back and, and check my answers. But the same thing if I'd gotten 8 degrees, I would have not believed that because that would imply that my beta was really, really small. Um, it is if my starting, my true dip is 63.5. Okay, so let's say you're asked to write this as the whole attitude, the uh, which means the strike and the dip of this bed. 
this would be going, let's see, if we draw in north, north is straight up, this line is going to be Let's see, I'm just measuring the amount that it's it's coming off of east, but you could do it the other way too. This looks like it's coming about 14 degrees off of east, which means coming down from here. It is 90 minus 14, 76. So north, 76, west, or east. And it is dipping to the north, it's going down that direction, so 50.2 degrees north. Now the problem with this that you might might see is that um, that actually doesn't follow the right hand rule. If I give this as my orientation, this would be going down and to the left. So if you want to rewrite it, just come over to the other side and you're going to do uh, you're going to come down 14, come down another 90, um, and then you need to move 180 degrees across to get the strike in this direction. So I'm going to do 180 minus 14 minus 90 and see what I have left. And it is 76. So now it's going to be south, 76, west, and maybe that doesn't surprise you, but it's always just safe to think through <clears throat> why, that, why that exists. South, 76, west, 50.2, north, and it's a bit north, northwest. So that would be the full attitude of that bed. Anytime someone says attitude, what they really just mean is strike and dip or some equivalent phrasing like dip, dip direction um, or quadrant uh, notation or azimuth. This is written in quadrant. Hope that um, helps you understand a little bit about apparent dip.